This is the Boundless Podcast, and it's a sad truth that there is boundless need all over the world, maybe even in your own home. And you're about to hear a message of boundless hope that comes through the boundless love of Jesus Christ. These messages were recently given at St. Matthew Lutheran Church in Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. And at the end of today's show, I'll tell you how you can find out more about St. Matthew. But now here is today's message on Boundless. We're never supposed to talk about religion and politics, but I, here I am talking about both. We begin a new sermon series this morning as we go through the month of September. You'll be hearing sermons having to do with four important issues about the election. We'll begin by looking at the, t- the issue of religious freedom. Then we'll look at uh, religious schools. We'll look at immigration and the rule of law. And we'll end this sermon series by looking at Lutherans and the culture wars. But before I go any further this morning, I'd like to begin by telling you what you will not hear in this message series. You will not hear in this message series from me or Pastor Blonsky any kind of endorsement in a political candidate or a party. What you will hear in this message series are four important topics, topics that are among a li- uh, a li- among the top of the list of concerns for voters of this election and for previous elections. You'll also hear about these four topics and what God's Word has to say about them. Now for some of us in the room, talking about politics, it makes us very uncomfortable. But by doing this message series, by challenging us, by covering these topics, we're encouraging you to use that the, the gift that God has given you, the right to vote your conscience in the upcoming election. It makes us uncomfortable to talk about politics, but you and I have been blessed to live in this great land where we choose our leaders. We have rights that have been granted to us by God. They're affirmed in the Constitution of the United States. And one of those is in the very first amendment of the Constitution. It talks about the freedom of religion. The First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. We have the freedom of religion. And as you look at our world, that freedom has been coming under attack. You can see this in the cases that are being brought to the Supreme Court more and more. And, and thank God, at this point, the Supreme Court has always ruled on the side of religious freedom. But for how much longer? With our religious free, freedom being under attack, there are two responses we can take as Christians. We can simply just put our heads in the sand like ostriches and pretend nothing is wrong and just go about our daily lives. Or we can be bold. We can use that right that we have that's been affirmed by the Constitution and we can proclaim Christ. As we begin this morning, we hear from one of the early leaders of God's people in the Old Testament, from Moses. Moses, in the the book of Exodus, he led the people out of slavery in Egypt. And now, to set the scene for you, in in Deuteronomy chapter 4, the Israelites are at the edge of the promised land. They're looking into the promised land. Moses had disobeyed God when they were wandering in the wilderness. And so Moses wasn't going to go into the promised land. And he knew this. And so in Deuteronomy, in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses gives a series of lectures, words of wisdom to pass on to the Israelites as they get ready to enter the promised land. But those words that Moses has, they're not just for the Israelites as they get ready to enter the promised land. They're words for you and me this morning. Moses tells the people what they should do and what they shouldn't do when they're living in the promised land. He also tells them what's going to happen if they disobey God, if they go against the God of Israel. But he also tells them what's going to happen if they live according to the law. The law being the Ten Commandments that God gave to the people at Mount Sinai. 
And you and I, we, we've read the story. We know how that goes. The people promise, oh yes, we're going to follow the God of Israel. We're going to follow his Ten Commandments. But it doesn't take long for them to break that promise. For them to, to enter into the promised land. To see the Canaanites who were living in that land. And the gods that they were worshiping. And they begin to worship those gods. Or worse yet, they bring those gods into the worship of the God of Israel. The people were, they were living according to the law, the Ten Commandments, as they waited for the Messiah, the Savior that had been long promised. As I said, they tried to live by the Ten Commandments, but they failed at it miserably every time. Like you and me each day, we try to live according to God's word, and we fail miserably at it. But where the Israelites, where you and I fail daily, Jesus came. He fulfilled the law perfectly. He kept the Ten Commandments perfectly. He paid the price for your sins and my sins. And he died on the cross. And he took our place at the cross. One of the things that Moses brings up in Deuteronomy chapter 4 is he cautions the people not to mess with the Word of God, not to add to the Word of God, and not to take away from the Word of God. If you go to the very end of God's word, to the book of Revelation, in chapter 22, John, the apostle, he wrote the gospel of John. He wrote the book of Revelation. And in chapter 22, John gives us the same warning that we shouldn't add and we shouldn't take away from the word of God. I hope you're enjoying today's show. If you'd like to know more about St. Matthew, go to our website, at stmats.net, S-T-M-A-T-T-S dot net. And if you have a three-year-old or a four-year-old in your life, you'll want to know about our Early Childhood Center. Enrollment is open for our three-year-old preschool and our four-year-old preschool. Go to our website to set up a tour of our preschool and to talk to one of our teachers for your three-year-old and four-year-old where we will teach them all that they'll need to know to get ready for kindergarten as well as sharing with them the love of Jesus Christ in a safe and Christian setting. That's the Early Childhood Center at St. Matthew Lutheran in Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. Now, back to today's message. You and I have the freedom of living in this country, that we are able to go out from here this morning, and we, are to, we can share God's word in its entirety with the world. And we can do this without fear of the government, of some government agency coming in and saying, no, you you can't say that about Jesus. Or no, you can't say, we don't have to worry about that because we have that right in our constitution. We have this freedom. But sadly, many people in America, even churches in America, they're afraid to use that freedom that we have in the constitution because of the culture that you and I are currently living in. I don't have to say a lot about the culture because we're living in it. It's the canceled culture. It's where if you see a person and they take a stand on a certain issue or they say something about a certain issue, and if the culture doesn't like what they're saying, they just try to cancel them and make it so that they didn't exist. And this is what has happened. Our culture is is this way. It's led some churches and and some people to be afraid to speak up because they might offend someone if they talk about Jesus, about the Bible, something like that. They're afraid that they're going to be canceled if they talk about Jesus. But no matter how hard our culture tries, it can't cancel Jesus. Churches, they've become afraid of, of the freedom that they have That some have taken God's word, his law and his gospel, and they've watered it down. They've diluted it down so that it's not so offensive to other people. The other approach that we're seeing take place is this idea of cafeteria style approach to God's word. This is where people have their, their tray and they can take certain parts of God's word and they can put that on their tray of belief. Maybe let me give you an example of this. One of the two of the core teachings of the Christian church is uh, sin and grace. Some people, they don't want to talk about sin. It's ugly. It's dark. It's judgmental. We can't call a person a sinner or tell them they're sinning because that's judgmental. 
But that same person that doesn't want to talk about sin, they love to hear about forgiveness and love, uh, the love of God. Because God forgives us when we do something wrong. And it's all about the love that God has for everyone. And it's all flowery and beautiful. They love to hear about that. But we're not to use this religious freedom we have to pick and choose God, the word of God that we want to follow. We are to proclaim God's word in its entirety. We don't have to be afraid to go out and to proclaim his law and his gospel in its entirety. Afraid that we're going to offend someone. We have that freedom to proclaim his law and his gospel. The law being, the law tells us what God wants us to do for him. The law shows us our sin. It convicts us and it shows us our need for our Savior. The gospel being what God has done for each and every one of us through his son, Jesus Christ. How he came and he took on our flesh and our very blood. He fulfilled the law perfectly. He died on the cross, paying the price for all of our sins. And he rose from the dead, defeating death. And by doing that, he has opened the way of eternal life for each and every one of us as a believer. We are, to, as, as God's people, we are to call something what it is. If it's a sin, we call it a sin. We don't have to be afraid to do that. We have the freedom of religion. But I would like you to think with me for just a moment. What would St. Matthew Lutheran Church in Hawthorne Woods, Illinois, but not just this church, but the entire Christian church in America look like if we lost our freedom of religion? We would not be able to gather in this beautiful sanctuary like we are this morning. We wouldn't be able to worship God with our songs. We wouldn't be able to hear his word proclaimed publicly like it is now. We would meet in secret, maybe a house church. The church would look very much different. It would look very similar to the churches in the first century. The church would look different, but the work of sharing the gospel, of people coming to faith, it would go on. Sometimes we, we, we think that the, this is our church, that this is your church or my church. It's not your church. It's not my church. It's God's church. And it doesn't matter if we're meeting here in the sanctuary or if we're meeting in secret. The work of the gospel will go on, proclaiming the gospel. We have the freedom of religion. It's granted to us by God. It's affirmed in the very first part of the Constitution. And we are to use that freedom to proclaim the law and the gospel in its entirety without fear of some government agency coming in and saying, telling us, no, you can't say that about, in the, about the law, or you can't t say that about the gospel. We have that freedom. We don't have to be afraid where we have to pick and choose what we're going to preach about or what we're going to do in our Bible studies. We are to share God's word in its entirety. So I encourage you this morning, be bold. Use that freedom that you have been given and proclaim Christ and him crucified for the sins of the world. Proclaimed him risen from the dead so that others can know about Jesus and the hope that is only found in him. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you enjoyed today's message on Boundless. Boundless is produced by St. Matthew Lutheran Church in Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. And if you're in the northwest suburbs of Chicago, you are invited to join us for worship services and other events at St. Matthew. You can go to our website to plan your visit at www.stmatts.net, S-T-M-A-T-T-S.net. Please rate the show wherever you get your podcasts from, and positive reviews are always welcome. Our podcast music was provided by the thepodcasthost.com and Alidu, the podcast maker. Find your own free music for your podcast over at thepodcasthost.com forward slash free music. Thank you for listening to the Boundless Podcast. God's richest blessings to you and join us again next time.